Right, so now we're on to section B. Uh, so, um, give me some information about bromine and mercury here. Um, and some properties. So, first of all, complete the electron configuration of a bromine atom. So, bromine has got 35 electrons, if you look at the old periodic table. So, 1s2, uh, and it's going to be 2s2. 2p6, then of course we go to 3s2, 3p6, 3d10, and then we're into 4s2, 4p5. It doesn't matter if you swap those two around, because obviously you'll remember that the 4s will actually fill before the 3d. But this just makes it nice um, in terms of all the twos, all the threes, and all the fours together. Bromine and mercury have many elements. Uh, predict the formula uh, when bromine reacts with aluminium. Uh, so aluminium is of course in group three, so it's going to form Al three plus. Bromine is in group seven, so form Br minus, and therefore the formula is Al Br three. Explain how the structure and bonding in bromine account for its relatively low melting point. Well, remember, between bromine molecules, there are weak London forces. So between two Br2 molecules, so I've got bromine like so, and then another bromine like so. Between these two are weak London forces, which are very easily broken, which results in a very low melting point. So, um, main thing you need to do, weak London forces between the bromine molecules, which are very easily overcome for two marks. Uh, so this is quite a nice question really, it's five marks for what is effectively GCSE. Um, so, just, we've got a mercury 2 bromide being produced and it wants me to compare the electrical conductivity of mercury 2 bromide and mercury in a solid and molten state. So the key thing is, in your answer, cover all the points they've asked you to. Loads of people just miss something out. So here we go. Mercury bromide is going to be ionically bonded, isn't it? Because it's a metal bonded with a non-metal. Uh, so an ionic substance will conduct when molten because the ions can move. They cannot conduct in the solid state because the ions are in fixed positions in a giant ionic lattice. Mercury, however, can conduct both as a solid and a liquid because it's got delocalised electrons throughout the structure which can move and therefore carry a current. So you've got to make sure you cover all the points. It wouldn't, be, it wouldn't harm you either to just put here mercury bromide ionic giant ionic lattice, mercury metallic bonded. Uh, right, so one for the calculators, uh, pretty straightforward though, isn't it? you just got to read the data off the mass spectrum here and work out the uh, relative atomic mass. So the way you do it is you times the percentage of abundance by the um, M over Z value, which is 85. So 72.17 over 100 times 85, 27.83 over 100 times 87. Add them together and you'll get this. I would strongly recommend you work out this first and this first and then add them together. Don't try to put it all in your calculator at once. It's, you know, you, you may easily make a mistake, um, you know, with brackets and the stress of the exam and you'll be out and it's easy mark. So don't lose them at this stage. Just take your time, work it out before you get your value. And look at the value, does it make sense? 85, it's gotta be between these two, hasn't it? 85.56, that does make sense. It's got to be near the 85 mark because that's your higher abundance. So it's looking right. So check your value, make sure it makes sense, yeah? So then once we to identify X, so check out your periodic table and you will find that rubidium has um, the nearest relative atomic mass to that. So it's gonna be rubidium. The other clue is it melts on a warm summer's day and we know that all the group one elements have low melting points as well.